Thank you for listening to this weekend's message. For more information about events or details here at New Tribe Church, visit us online at newtribe.church. Be sure to also look for us on Facebook and Instagram at New Tribe Church. I'm really excited about what God has uh, spoken to me over this past week. Every, every time Mother's Day comes around, I, I pray and, and I ask the Lord, you know, specifically for, for a word. And, uh, and I'm really encouraged with the word that he's brought today. I want to encourage you, it's not just for moms, it's for all of us, but I think moms are going to be honored in a great way through this word. So uh, before we pray, two things that I want to do as we pray. One, at the first part of our prayer, I just want us to honor maybe those moms who have already gone to heaven. They've, they've, they've passed from this life to the next. I want us to honor them. And I just want to also pray a special prayer of blessing for mothers that are here today. So would you join me in prayer right now? And let's just do that. Lord, we pause for a moment and we celebrate the memory of those mothers who have, who have passed from this life to the next. We, we honor their life. And, and I pray that their children here, that, that their lives would honor the legacy of their mother. And we ask Holy Spirit today for just a special blessing on the heart of mothers in the room today, on the soul of mothers in the room today. Those who are young mothers who are raising young children and all of those trials that come with that, those who are older and have grown children, that they would continue to connect, nourish, lead, and guide their children. We're just thankful as the family of God that when we pray, we know that you, God in heaven, Put your hand of favor on our lives. That's what we ask for today as we celebrate every mom in Jesus' name. Let's just celebrate moms together real quick. Come on, we do that together. All right. So today we are going to be preaching on the topic of pain. (laughs) Ouch, right? On Mother's Day, like what kind of topic, why would you choose the topic of pain? Well, I didn't, God gave it to me. And I know that at first that might seem like a downer. However, the kind of pain I'm referring to actually teaches us one of life's greatest lessons, one of life's most powerful lessons. And really this lesson we can only learn about through mothers. But before we get there, uh, we need to differentiate between the, the varying types of pain. Because how many know some pain is purposeful And some pain is unnecessary, right? Maybe some of us have caused some unnecessary pain. Some pain is purposeful and some pain is unnecessary. Now, there are all kinds of pain, acute pain, chronic pain. How many of you just wish your chronic pain would just go right now in in Jesus' name, that it would just be gone? Growing pain. And some of these are are purposeful. Some Some of these are unnecessary. Growing pain, for instance, in a literal sense can be very purposeful. In, in my teenage years, and a lot of teenage boys experience this, I can't speak for women, but uh, the, the thighs become like these aching sore points. And I, through my teenage years, I was stretching all the time. And I was in my grandmother's car one time and I was just like stretching my legs. And she said, boy, you look just like a cat. Why are you stretching so much? And I was having these, these growing pains. I was stretching, but metaphorically, growing pains can be purposeful because they indicate stretching in our lives, right? Like I'm growing. Something inside of me is, is expanding for a new opportunity. It's a positive change. Acute pain serves a purpose, right? Twisting an ankle, ouch, a burn, even a, a paper cut. You know, these are all purposeful because they point us to the source and the location of the pain, but then something like brain freeze, unnecessary, right? <laughs> Just need to like one of the worst kind of pains, but you just slow down when you eat that popsicle, right? Um, I get those all the time. It tells you what kind of eater I am. So, so there's some us unnecessary pains. I, I recently went outside to shoot basketball with my son wearing only flip-flops. And uh, yeah, so you're already thinking, ow. So, but that was a bad idea and it just got worse. We actually made it through shooting hoops, no problem. And uh, we decided when we were done, hey, let's wrap this thing up. And so we shot baskets until each one of us made a nothing but net shot. So we shot, shot, shot until I made the first three-pointer, nothing but net, go dads. Um, And uh, he made the second one and we went inside. He went ahead of me and I took off running after him, flipping, flopping after him around to the back of the house. Well, several years ago, I laid down, (laughs) several years, we only been here two years, two years ago, um, I laid down these huge stepping stones because there's some muddy patches in the grass and uh, flipping, flopping my way around the back entrance, um, I drop kicked one of those stepping stones with my big toe. 
And uh, I kicked it so hard that I moved it about a foot. The pain level was about a 10. You, know, you guys ever seen these little pain charts? You go to the doctor and they show like from there. So I was like, I went from utterly horrible to unimaginable, unspeakable. <laughs> that was pretty good. So I almost had a cuss word, but it was unspeakable. So I didn't say anything at all. Just, just, but I really kicked that thing hard. And so my, my flip flopping turned into a, a drop kick. And look, I'm not one of those kind of people who's like, well, maybe God was trying to teach you a lesson. No, that was completely unnecessary and completely avoidable. The only lesson I learned is don't kick rocks. I mean, that is, that's the lesson to be learned there. So there, are, there is pain that is purposeful and there is pain that is unnecessary, but sometimes a, a misstep, okay, that causes incredible pain is a lesson. And sometimes it's just plain unnecessary. Now there's another kind of pain even more painful, but it is even more purposeful than it is painful. One of the greatest kinds of pain, so as I've been told, is labor pain. <laughs> and all the women said, you have no idea. You're right, I'm not an expert on this topic because I haven't lived through it, but I have witnessed it. Labor pain, one of the most incredible kinds of pain, but also one of the more purposeful types of pain. And I discovered some things this week that I wanted to share with you. Labor pain, where did it come from? In response to sin committed in the garden, God says to Eve, watch this in Genesis chapter three, verse 16, Genesis three sixteen. he says, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth and in pain you will bring forth children. Genesis three sixteen. I like John, John three sixteen better. Anybody with me? You know? <laughs> And all the expecting mothers said, amen, <laughs> right? Like, wow, I will, this is God's response to sin. I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. In pain, you will bring forth children. Now, with our second, when Brandon was, was being born, it was 13 hours of, of grueling labor. We didn't understand why Jennifer couldn't, I was gonna say she couldn't pass the child, like it's a kidney stone, like <laughs> just pass the child. Like we got to the place. We got to the place where it was time for delivery, but there was no delivery. And uh, finally, we had to, after trying all of these things and, and, and witnessing, and I'm just going to tell you guys and moms, it's not to scare you, but, uh, and I'm not trying to be graphic, I'm just trying to be real, right? Like uh, organic, okay? There's, there's positions of having a baby that I didn't know existed, right? The ones they don't show in the movie. So they, they maneuvered every different kind of way, and she just couldn't have it. They said, we're going to have to perform a C-section. We found out immediately why. He came in weighing a whopping 10 pounds, 9.4 ounces. <laughs> Catch of the day. And I just, you know, <laughs> proudest moment in a father's life, you know, like, I, I literally asked them, you know, is this the world record, 10 pounds, 9 pounds? <laughs> And they were like, no, but it's the biggest baby born here today. And I was like, way to go. Like, you know, walking around like a big bass, you know, that I just caught. You know, look at my son, look at this. You know, it, you know medically, a child that big, the shoulders can't pass through. They, they, they get locked up against the pelvic bone. And so praise God for surgery. Um, you know, that things could have really went south quick if, if that had not been available. So I witnessed Jennifer go through an incredible amount of pain. Uh, we, we look at that at first, God's saying that, and I think we, I think we tend to misinterpret uh, how God can use pain. He says, I will multiply your pain, but don't miss this. Even in the consequence of sin, God in his grace has made sure, he's made certain that this kind of pain will also be purposeful. Watch this. Listen to Jesus in the Gospel of John. John chapter 16, verse 21. Here's what Jesus said. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy. Amazing, isn't it? I want you to see this. In the same place where God chose to multiply pain, he also chose to multiply joy. Now tell me pain can't be purposeful. I saw this this week, and one of the first lessons that I wanted to draw from this for us today is this. Through some of life's most painful experiences, God has purposed to multiply your joy. Oh, there should be an amen somewhere. Because I know that you've experienced pain in your life. Some of you may be going through some labor pains of a kind right now. And I just wanna tell you 
that if God is in the workings, this is not stump your toe, you know, we cause an incredible mess. I believe he can redeem those things as well. But through some of your life's most painful experiences, God has purpose to multiply your joy. How many know he's a good God? He's a good God. He's a great God. So labor pain, I've been looking at this all week, whether in a literal sense or a metaphorical sense, is purposeful. Something happens when the child is born, right, that only moms and child will ever experience. It's a well-known fact that both mother and baby have a deep genetic predisposition to bond after birth. In fact, we know more now than ever how critical those first years are, don't we? Those formation years years. And, and who will argue, right? Who will argue or try to compare? Who will argue against a mother's love for her child? It, it's unlike anything, right? I mean, how many stories have been told about a child now become adult after having burned every bridge, squandered every opportunity, and caused pain in the lives of others can still find a place to crash at mama's house, right? Right? Because mom just keeps loving. My, my grandmother, who I got to spend some time with this weekend, her youngest son, my uncle, struggled with alcoholism and drug addiction. And it was really sad because he taught me everything I know about music and guitars. And he was a great musician. He really, I believe, could have been, I believe he could have been famous in the sense that he could have done it for a career. He was that good, but he could not escape the addiction. And she would not kick him out of the house. He died on her couch when he was, I don't even think he was 40 years old yet. And, and I, I didn't understand that. You know, I thought, why, well, he should be kicked to the curb. But there's something about a mother's love that, that we even as men don't understand, but I think we can learn from it because it comes from somewhere. And, and so who will argue against a mother's love? It seems that when everyone else has given up, mom is still giving love, Right? Some of you right now, you're just, you're thankful for mom in your heart. It seems that no matter how much pain a child will cause, mom's joy multiplies still. It's amazing. God put that there. The same God who put that pain there didn't just say, hey, well, you know, take this. He made sure that that pain was purposeful. Is anybody seeing this? <laughs> this is incredible to me. Mom's joy just continues to multiply. God put that there. We say, well, how do you know that? How do you know God put that there? Ask any mom, was it easy? She'll tell you, no, it was God. Was it easy to love again and again? Was it easy to love every time there was a mistake? No, it wasn't, but it was God. Now imagine a mother. We've seen this picture. Some of you have recently experienced this. A mother's holding newborn child in her arms, and that first moment the child's eyes open. A child's eyes ask the question, was I worth the pain? Mom instinctively is looking and saying, absolutely, yes, of course. Like, there's no question. Was I worth, worth, there is, what are you talking about? I've forgotten about that. There's nothing but joy there. And this, this bond that is formed, this, this changes everything in their relationship. That disposition, the mother's, yes, that disposition of her heart will never change. It's incredible. So what does this have to do with my relationship with God? I'm so glad you asked. I think it has a lot to do with our relationship with God. Listen from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 66. God says to his people, as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. I don't know about you, but after what I just shared with you, does that not open up your heart and your mind in a new meaningful way to this verse right here? As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, says the Lord. Labor pain is a purposeful pain. God's word affirms it and his nature displays it. It is true in a literal sense and it is true in a metaphorical sense as well. In a literal sense, when it comes to your relationship with God, this next point here, you guys help me preach this. In a literal sense, when it comes to your relationship with God, there is no amount of pain that you can cause God that will sever his love for you. You, 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 can't, you can't do it. It doesn't matter how much pushback, how much rebellion, there's still a place for you to go and find comfort in the arms of God because he loves you that way, that unbreakable bond kind of way. And I just think this is incredible. To Jesus, you were worth the pain. And he, whom the joy set before him, endured the cross for you. 
was I worth it? Yes, you were worth it. Not only in a literal sense, the pain of labor is also purposeful in a metaphorical sense. Watch this. When God is birthing something new in your life, the pain of that labor is purposeful. I believe in this room, in our church, that God is birthing something new in the lives of a lot of people. I want you to know that I'm a realist. You know, I mean, we've been doing this, a lot of us have been doing this now for a couple years. And we're gonna get up here and celebrate and shout and dance and talk about freedom. And we're gonna talk about breakthrough. And we're gonna pray for miracles and ask for the Holy Spirit to fall and let his fire come and transform who we are. But I'm telling you, when God begins to move in your life and he's birthing something new inside of you, there might be a little pain involved. There might be a little bit of pruning There might be a little bit of burning away of some things, but hallelujah, that pain is purposeful. I mean, I can be a witness to that for you. If you've been here long enough, this is not the first time that we've referenced this this passage coming up next. It's become one of my favorite. Hosea chapter 11, verse three. But before we we get to that, I wanna wanna just think about this. I wanna think about the, the purposeful pain. Um, uh, number one, we don't celebrate the pain when it's happening, right? <laughs> uh, I want you to think about being in the labor and delivery room and celebrating the pain while it's happening, you know? <laughs> Woo, yeah, good, embrace it, you know? Breakthrough's coming, you know? You'll get slapped, you'll get killed, right? Um, it's not gonna happen, right? Your tone changes to the reality of what's happening, but you know what's coming, you know what's coming, so there's, there's compassion, but there's like, there's like a celebration is in suspense, you know what I mean? Right? We're, we're waiting for this moment. I, I really wanna talk about this, this purposeful pain real quick when I'm talking about God birthing something new inside of your life, because I've listened to the undertone of messages, like sermons and, and, and blogs and things like, I've listened to the undertone of those messages over the years about how you know, you, no, we're no longer striving. We're just resting. We're, we're no longer working. We're just, we're just waiting. And I want to, here's my heart. I understand the sentiment of those kind of messages. But my concern is that a misinterpretation of that will render us spiritually lazy because we'll just not doing anything. We'll not do anything. And anything that seems painful, we'll say, well, this isn't of God. And I'm telling you that I believe the opposite is true sometimes. Not all the time. Some pain's unnecessary. We don't need to strive anymore. Just rest. Try telling a woman in labor, hey, stop striving. Just rest. Go ahead. It's not, <laughs> the context says no. That's ridiculous, right? It's the incredible pain uh, it's, there's, there's incredible compassion, but there's also this incredible suspense for celebration because we know what is coming. Okay, here it is, Hosea 11.3. God said this about his people. He said, yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I love that. There's the picture of the parent teaching the children of God to walk. I took them up by the arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I, I just wanna, I wanna share this with you today in a way that just stirs a, a reality reality inside of your heart of what God might be doing if there is a little bit of chiseling happening inside of you. The purpose of learning to walk is to be able to ascend the mountain, not to chill, right? Yes, Jesus may have found you when you were broken, but he healed you and said, take up your mat and walk so that you could come and follow him on a journey. God is not just rocking you like a baby all of your life. He wants to teach you to walk so that you can ascend the mountain and follow him on a journey. Oh, tell somebody next to you, I haven't arrived. Just tell them, I, I haven't arrived. I'm, I'm still learning to walk. We're following Jesus somewhere. Here's what I want you to see. I want you to see the, the hopeful anticipation of what's coming. If you're enduring a painful experience, there's still work to be done in the harvest. There's still goals to reach in your life. There's still dreams to pursue. God is wanting to birth something new in in your life, and at some point, we gotta be ready to get off the milk and take and eat the meat in front of us so that we can grow. There might even be a little bit of pain in the labor, but as long as it is God who is birthing something new in you, that pain is purposeful. 
Somebody say lactose intolerant. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Don't say that. Really, in some, some of our faith, that's some, some of us need to be there. Need to move from the milk to the meat. I'm just saying that everybody in this room loves your babies, but you want them to grow up. That's why you're able to love them. Because you know this won't last forever. <laughs> Precious memories, you know, like... You want them to grow up. You want them to get moving. You want them to be successful. You want them to thrive. You want them to break through new challenges so that they can walk into new opportunities. I'm telling you, God wants the same for you. When God is birthing something new in you, it is rarely instant or painless. What a powerful lesson. I don't even have to go down the road right now about how we as a generation crave things that are instant. <laughs> I, I, I really believe this. I'm, this, is, this is kind of a, this is not like a, a dig or anything, but I believe that people are redesigning their entire family's structure, the interior of their homes, and the way they spend their time, all based off a picture they saw on Instagram or social media. Look, if God is birthing something new inside of you, rarely is it going to be instant or painless. But that pain, as long as it's him who's birthing something new inside of you, is always purposeful. Again, not all pain is necessary, but at least some pain is purposeful. How many of you are glad for that? I don't plan to go and kick stepping stones with my big toe. I'm not going to plan to ever do that again, but it might happen. I'm not going to say it was God trying to teach me a lesson, right? It was me being clumsy, and I made a poor decision to wear flip-flops, right? But other times, there may be things that God's doing in my life, and he's purposefully working things out for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. I'm thankful for the pains of labor more than I ever have been. So listen, whether you have given birth in the natural or, or God is birthing something through you in the spiritual, just know that the, that the great pain that you endure is not without purpose. Somebody say labor pain, labor pain. Some, some women in here are so inspired right now that you're going to go home and say, we need to have another baby. I love that message. <laughs> some of your moms are like, no, I wouldn't think that at all. We are done. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? And all of this that we learn, all this that we see from the Scripture, we wouldn't be able to understand it were it not for moms. Come on, it's the fifth commandment to honor your mother and your father. And by doing that, we actually honor and celebrate God. Come on, let's honor moms one last time today. Thank you, moms, and, and happy Mother's Day to you. Now, we're gonna conclude today a little bit differently. Uh, there's three prayers that the Lord put on my heart to pray for you today. So this is not like the 30-second prayer, amen, we stand, woo, we all get out. We're gonna sit for a minute because I believe there's some things that God wants to do inside of your heart, not just women, men, us too. I wanna pray a prayer of impartation, a prayer that's just for women, moms in particular. Maybe that relationship between you and mom was severed. Maybe it was severed between you and your child, but I want you to know that learning how to be a great mother it's never too late learning how to, to mother God's way, how to be present the way God intended. Maybe just through impartation. Maybe today you're, you're married, engaged, and you anticipate one day, man, I would love, I wanna be a great mom. I wanna, I wanna do things right. I believe this impartation prayer is for you. Another prayer is prayer of healing. Maybe today you're wounded or there's, you're in mourning, and I just wanna pray that God would bring healing in your life. This last prayer is a prayer for all of us. is a prayer of affirmation. And we're just gonna ask God some things and let him speak. So would you pray with me? Let's bow your head. And first, this, this prayer of impartation. If, if you're a mom today, if, if you're a young lady, it doesn't really matter. Just open your hands towards heaven. Just palms facing heavenwards as if you're receiving something, a gift, if you're receiving a gift. And I, just, I, wanna, I wanna affirm and, and, and declare some things that you were, you were designed to love 
and to nurture unlike anybody else on the planet. And today, my, my, my prayer is that God would impart into your life gifts unimaginable, character unimaginable, love and compassion unimaginable, unimaginable, un- unbreakable bond. Maybe you're already in a situation where you have several children or just maybe one's on the way or maybe you're not. Father, would you bless these women today? Would you impart in them a mother's heart? The second prayer, this prayer of healing, if if you're wounded by any reason at all, relationship with, with mom or maybe you're in mourning right now, Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn. Listen, there's, there can be purpose in this pain if you'll invite God in the situation. This is the paradox of our faith, grace and truth, glory in our suffering. He even said, blessed are those who mourn. I, I just pray right now, blessing over those who, who are hurting and wounded, or maybe they're mourning the loss of a mother, that you would come, move across this room and bring healing in Jesus' name. And this, this last one for all of us, if you just open our hands in a posture of of receiving today his grace, his presence, a prayer of affirmation. This prayer is you talking to God, the God who said, I will comfort you as a mother comforts her own children. Listen, I I prayed this this week. I'm gonna pray it again this morning. So it's not like, you know, I've already prayed this kind of prayer and you skip on this, here's what I want you to do. As a newborn child, we'll look into the eyes of that nurturing mother. I'm not saying God's a woman, don't, don't get weird on me. But I'm saying, God who said, as a mother comforts her children, so I will comfort you. I just want you to ask God a simple question today. Was I worth it? Was I worth the pain that I caused you? Was I worth the hurt that I brought into other people's lives. Jesus, was I worth all the times that I denied or doubted you or mocked your works? Was I worth it? Take a minute. I just want you to ask God that simple question and I want you to listen for his reply.